I'm so excited that you're joining me today to talk about finding your cadence to thrive in real estate. My name's Kurt Euler, and I'm gonna walk you through something that has not just helped me within my personal life, but has also helped thousands of others that I've helped walk through improving the speed of their life. Now, if you're not familiar with the term cadence, think about when you're running, or somebody else is running if you're not a runner. Every time their foot strikes the ground, that speed at which that's happening is called cadence. The faster your feet strike the ground, the faster that you go. That's what we're gonna be talking about today in just the next 10 to 15 minutes to talk about how we can improve the speed and the quality of the growth in your life. And we're gonna talk not just about um, being successful in business. Real success comes in your, when your career makes a difference. When you feel like at the end of the day, at the end of your career, that you've accomplished your mission and that you've accomplished that mission with your, in your personal life and your family as well. So for most of us, we don't just come from backgrounds that, that have a lot of wealth. Our businesses, that's fueling the personal mission that we have. That could be growing our children, it could be helping a nonprofit or ministry we care about, it could be helping other people accomplish their missions. And this matters, and why I first kind of got started in this is, I'm that person that has an insatiable need to figure things out. I have to put things in order. I'm the person that steps up when no one else will, which sometimes gets me into problems. And I have a desire to serve others and help them grow their potential. And so early in my career, I started looking at, like, I, I'm not getting as much done as I feel that I could. And so I started really researching this subject and then later talking with mentors. And I found that, the average person wastes a huge amount of their time. I know that was true for me. So the average person has 60 plus meetings per month and half of them are not needed. That If you work in an office environment, whether it's a brokerage, um, a co-working space, or a corporation, um, for those that aren't in real estate, that, that, that holds a lot more true than those of us that work at home some days. But even then, I you know if you look back and you say, well, I met with this person, um, for coffee, and that's good for relationship building. What, could that have been more efficient? Or if you look back, was that kind of a wasted meeting? That's something that you have to decide, but we'll walk through some of those things here. On average, from a wasted time perspective, two, people spend two hours per day recovering from distractions, and 80% of those distractions are trivial. It's somebody coming in and interrupting you. It's um, a spam message on your phone that comes in. All of those things distract us and take us away from that deep work and make you not as efficient as you otherwise could be. And we'll walk through some tips about that. And then on average, people spend 13 hours per week reading, writing, and responding to emails. If that's the average, for those of us in real estate, come on, that number is a lot higher. And not that responding to clients is not important, but how you do that and how you do that strategically is something that a lot of people I don't think have thought about um, depending on your business, it may be best to shift uh, when you reply to people or um, having a different response time to that. Now, why am I the one to talk about this? Well, I've been told that I have an entrepreneur's cadence. So I've been blessed to do a whole lot in my life. I've helped build some really large companies. Uh, I've been part of the small team that took one public. Later, we then sold that company for over $8 billion but my roots have always been in small businesses and with entrepreneurs. I started my first small business when I was 14 that was legally incorporated. And so I've always had a heart and I've always spent time helping people that are running their own businesses. My wife and I ran a marketing agency that has helped many of them and I personally have coached thousands of independent businesses and private business owners in both their marketing and how to achieve, uh, be a high achieving servant leader. That holds both within the businesses that I work in and things like my church. It's taken me throughout helping people within my own fraternity and it's taken me all the way to the White House where I've taken dozens of companies to go and present and to help to grow their businesses. So we'll talk through just a little bit of that. It's kind of really, this started for me kind of in college, I think to the main thing because I was a D, a D1, a division one SEC athlete. So. Running Division One consists of getting up at 4.30 a.m., long, torturous runs in the rain and mud, unending calisthenics, days on the road, being tired and frequently miserable. And 
In the first few months of that insane discipline and coaching, the weak are frankly eliminated without any hope of becoming a collegiate athlete, much less a D1 letterman. Coming out of college, I thought that I was a rock star, only to learn that there was an entirely different level of competition and a new finish line to reach. The training uh, looks for those men and women that can survive both as an athlete and I found in business, uh, the tr training involves an environment of constant stress, failure, hard work, and still those that are still looking to do more and are humble enough to listen to a coach because we don't figure this out on our own. And so uh, these are just some of the mentors that have helped me get to where I am. They've helped open up their personal lives and actually their calendars to show me what it really takes to thrive in business and not get derailed by common pitfalls. And I don't just do that alone. So in the bottom middle there are a group of guys that I've been with in a very close uh, relationship, a kind of a band of brothers where we're going through this with our, we've gone through this with our mentor Reggie, where not only has Reggie opened up his calendar and showed us what that struggle looks like to both grow in business and at home and the struggles of trying to figure out how to do both, I have this group of guys around me that do that as well. And so that's something that we also get feedback from each other and we can do that in an intimate way. But before we jump right in, I just wanna take two minutes and I wanna do a little experiment here that this is really fun for me. Um, hopefully we can do this in a workshop one day. I have a few of these, but for right now, let's do this in this video. Your perceptions shape reality. So I want you to picture something in your head right now as I describe it. You are on a boat. You're traveling through the Gulf. The, the boat is a thousand feet long or longer. I mean, it's gigantic. We're not talking a pontoon boat here. It weighs over a hundred thousand tons. There's water all around you uh, with shore off in the distance. There are more than 6,000 people on board. There are periodic trips that you get to take to the shore and every meal is prepared for you. What do you see? Is this what you see? Or is this what you see? Everything that I just described describes both that cruise ship on the right and describes that battle carrier. It's really important that for I find going through this experiment because how you view the world, how you view things that come in, whether or not you need to respond to that email, take that meeting, um, set aside time for dinner with your family, all of that is very dependent upon how you perceive re reality. And frankly, my calendar, your calendar, your business, you should perceive that on the left. It's a battle carrier. You need to view that you are in a war for your time, for people that want to distract you, for people that want to sell you things that you don't need, that want to get you watching just another two hours on Netflix rather than doing something that will help bond your family, shape your kids, grow your real estate business. It's very easy to fall into the right. And that does not mean that it has to be super high stress and you don't have to be angry or anything. But when you treat your calendar and your business like this battleship on the left, it allows you to spend more, spend more time on the right as well. So let's walk through now the specifics of how you can increase the cadence to thrive as a real estate agent. So there's a few things here. There's long-term increases and there's short-term increases. Let's walk through, start today, and plan on things that you can do for a continual effort. For me, I view that you have to be a steward of what you have and that it's easier to get a small team, lead a small team and to lead yourself well than it is to lead a big team. So those of us that work for ourselves, we're in a much better place. Um, and it's important to, shape it, to figure this out while we're growing our businesses because what I've seen with helping many is as your businesses grow, you start earning a lot more money, that money brings a lot of overhead that can distract you. So as quickly as possible, Choose your mission. Why are you working? I know a lot of times people say, well, I just love helping people find their find a new home or you know, find, set up a foundation so that they can, grow their, uh, they, they can grow their family in this community. There's usually something else beyond that. What is your mission? And, and that, that's a great goal to wanna help people with their homes, but is, is your mission um, 
you know, are is that your mission or are you selling homes to uh, fuel your family's mission or something else that you have? I have a good friend, their, their mission is to build as many uh, free or free, no cost, uh, water uh, wells around the world as possible. And they have built tens of thousands of wells in small communities uh, in developing nations to help communities out. That's why they work. That's why she works. Everything that she does is to help that. That's incredible. If you don't have a mission, I think it's important to start thinking through that, but it's also one of the things for me, I helped find other, helped other people find um, not just find their mission, but I helped other people with their missions until I found my own. I think it's important to view everything you're doing today, those decisions of why we're growing our businesses, why we're doing these things and wanting to do them better, is that we're being a good steward. We've been given skills and time and money, and we're supposed to use those things wisely. Many people have helped me get to where I'm at, so I think it's only fair that I help other people as well. That's just an approach that I take that because of that approach, it helps me want to look for how I can refine my life, my calendar, my business every day. And it takes intentional training. And you're doing that today, so I congratulate you for taking the few minutes to walk through this. Something else that I, I find that really helps is getting a mentor. I'm not talking about just a real estate coach. They're, those can be beneficial. They can also be harmful depending on the coach you pick. But getting a mentor is important. Um, be somebody that is 20 to 25 years ahead of you <coughs> sorry, in business. And you have to remember a few things with that mentor. You have to remember that you are not his or her top priority. <laughs> it is your job uh, as the mentee to be a good mentee, which sometimes means chasing your mentor down and helping to find time um, where they can meet you or come to them. I have somebody that I mentored for years. The only time in my slot was if he showed up at my house um, before I had my first meetings in the morning. So he would find time when he could stop by at 5 and 5.30 in the morning and bring me coffee so that we can get 30 minutes an hour. That, that's what being a good mentee sometimes looks like. Um, you need to walk into that mentor with questions. Ask them, how did they tackle something in, your, in their lives that's big? These, the mentors are sometimes good, I find, for not just those small minutia of things that you can prove, but really the big category things, the things that really shift your time. How, do, how did they go with struggling between work and home? And so that's why it's important to find that mentor that's 20 years ahead that has been successful in navigating where you're at now. There's a lot of things I learned from people that have failed. There's a lot of things I learned from my own failure. But, but what you're looking for is somebody that has failed and eventually succeeded succeeded in what you're wanting to do. Um, their job as the mentor or is to point out your weaknesses, to motivate you and to encourage you. Their job is to not make you feel good at times. Uh, and I just say that is a lot of times people look for coaches because they make them feel good. Motivation can be great for a very short time, but, but a mentor is going to help you in your real estate business um, by telling you what's true and what really needs to be done to help you grow. Um, <clears throat> you also need to find somebody to mentor. I just spoke to a friend of mine that I worked with at Navtech, now called Here Technologies. He's been in real estate for about 18 months. Uh, he's doing well in his business already. He walked me through some of that. He's already mentored five or six people, and that's something that he's looking to do. And when I kind of talk to him about why, I find it's the same thing that I've heard from others as well, is that he finds that by pointing out um, what those new people that are coming into real estate, things that they could do in business, things that they should do with their calendar, it's a huge mirror back on him as well. And I found that as well, and I've heard that from others. When you're mentoring somebody else, you're going to see things that they can improve in their lives, which they need to hear but you're going to find things that are going to help you as well. So, so often I find if I'm talking to somebody that I've been mentoring for a while, the same things that I'm walking them through is something that I really need to tell myself in that stage of my life. And so I point that out to them from a weakness as well because I don't have all these things figured out. There's a huge bit of things that I struggle with. And so if you wanna get faster over time, you need to not just find a mentor, you need to find somebody that you can mentor. And you wanna ask those that know you best for feedback. You wanna, in case for those of us who work in real estate, you wanna ask other clients 
that have worked with you, things that you could have done better. And when they don't really give you anything, I mean, you've got to create a, a, a situation, a way of asking um, so that they feel like they could actually give you critiques. For me, I, I give my wife this permission. It's not something I think any of us want to do all the time or here, but there are times we'll sit down and I'll walk through, hey, what am I, what, what could I really be improving here? What, what is she, she hears my work call sometimes and she'll walk me through sometimes things that could I, I need to work on. And so whoever that feedback comes from, I showed you that band of brothers that I have. Those are great people for identifying it back. Another thing you need to be doing is you need to identify potential leaders. For those of us in, in trying to grow our real estate businesses, this is huge. You may be working with somebody that's um, 25, 26, working on their first home. Uh, somebody who is not yet a leader at their company, but they're 45. Um, you were looking for women and men that could be potential leaders. You wanna think about them as a pipeline of leaders, and you wanna think about how you can promote those people to each other. I have a friend in the mortgage business. He is great about looking for people that have uh, high potential and introducing them to people that uh, that have already walked their path before and other high potential leaders so that they can kind of create their own band of brothers, their, their, their own group that can help them. And that's really great. The other thing that's nice about that and I found personally is that when I look for potential leaders or I look for le people that are leading around me, um, you help somebody with a home and you're like, they, I just don't understand how this person has been so successful. That's useful for me as well because it helps me identify different styles. You wanna look for people that lead very differently than you, that, that run their calendars very differently than you. And you wanna intentionally bring those people around you um, that lead differently so that you can, you can reflect back on how you're growing because none of us have this figured out. And so it's amazing how much, even at Showcase, um, some of the other executives on the team, they have very different styles than me. And when I look at why they're successful and why I like, like working with them or why others like working with them, why it's a different style and that's something that I can pick up. But we need somewhere to start. So those big long-term things are great, but what about our short-term increases? I mean, you probably got on this because you wanted to see how do you grow things today? How do you start growing your business today? And all those things I talked about, they will grow your business and they're very important. If you want to be really successful in real estate in 10 years, in five years, you need to start doing those things. But what can you do today that will impact your business next week? Let's walk through that. Now, this is going to seem really silly, but make your bed. It's often the little repetitive things in life that matter. If you've made your bed this morning, when you've made and make your bed tomorrow morning, you look back, it's funny, and you go, I've accomplished the first task of the day. You get a small sense of pride that should motivate you to get moving. And it also, I find personally that it tends to order your whole day. I look back and sometimes I'll go, wow, like it's 2 p.m. and what has happened? And it's like, that was the day I didn't make my bed. But it might be 6 p.m. and I'm just cranking on things. I'm wrapping up so that I can go home and have dinner um, with the family. And yep, that's the day that I made the bed. After all, it's like I said, it's those little repetitive things in life that matter. If you can't do the little things right, you certainly won't be able to do the big things right. And you need to just get started. Yes, that is me with an alligator on the left. Uh, we went into a pond where this guy, you can't actually see it. I think my foot is covering him up. Uh, he was wounded. And so we had to go in and pull him out. So in that bag back there was some antibiotics that we could treat him. And how do you do that? You just get started. So the next time you have a daunting item on your to-do list, maybe it's not uh, wrestling an alligator, um, but the best thing you can do is simply to start. Do you have a blog post that you need to write about an upcoming event that your past clients might be interested in? Just open up a blank document, start writing. Even if it doesn't mean anything yet or you don't know where it's going, just start. Or split the task up into smaller ones and knock off the first bite-sized chunk. Then close down that document, put it back on the calendar to bring up the next morning. Take advantage of the waves, but don't let them hurt you. If you've ever run out on the ocean and you've been hit with a, by a big wave, you know that those waves can either carry you back when, yes, I can't surf, but if you see somebody on TV or out on the beach that um, is riding that surfboard, they can carry you, 
or they can just pummel you into the ground. Well, I find the same thing happens, at least for me, from a work perspective. There are, there are times where I just get into um, a, a cadence and um, that's great and I'm just plowing away. There's also things that I do to take advantage of those. So my wife and I usually have a discussion every Sunday about the two days during the week that I can work late. That could be in the office, that could be at the office at home, but uh, we kind of build in those times where uh, I can start, start taking advantage of more time and we take advantage of those, the, the, those waves then. And work hard, harder. It's not that um, top athletes practice and train more. It's that they train more intentionally and are more focused. In the end, the people that work mo the most efficiently and put in the effort will break away from the pack in the long run. At some point, it does come down to cold calls, following up with clients, doing the work to get a transaction closed. Um, and, and, and so it, there is a huge effort bit in here, but it's also being efficient. So when you work, work. When you're off, be completely off. You know, when it's family time, focus on that. That's going to help you to work much harder and diligently when you're back at it the next day or if you pick back up after the family goes to bed. It's amazing how many times I've seen people um, that they haven't figured out how to work uh, harder and more efficiently and because of that when they're at work they feel guilty for not being at home when they're at home they feel guilty for not working more pulling out their phone and replying to a client's email and when when you can set it up so that when it's time to work you're you're not watching TV you're not listening to the music in the background unless that helps you but that you're working hard that that helps okay let me see what else I've got a few more here Identify and kill parasite habits. Um, those tasks that don't improve your life, and this kind of goes to the last one, those, those tasks that don't improve your life, your job, or those around you, they need to get gone. Do you watch uh, four hours of Netflix in the evening? Cut it back to two, or cut it out entirely. Um, unless that's something that you, and if you're married, your spouse feels really bonds you guys together. Um, you don't said you don't have to completely kill them, but it's it's intentionally choosing to do them. One of the things for me is checking email and Twitter, um, my Instagram feeds. Personally, I struggle with that sometimes, and I have to make sure that as that starts creeping back into my life, that um, I segment that into when that needs to be done. As a marketer, it is important for me to be on social media and reply to emails, but that is also something that I can use as an excuse for why I need to be on there all the time and not doing things that other things that matter in the business. Now we have just a couple more of these here. So this is a big one for me, is that you need to find and use a reliable system, um, a system for the tasks that need to be done. This is really important because if you don't, or at least for me, and I think for many people, if you've heard of a system called getting things done, a lot of people use GTD as that acronym. It talks about just like your computer, we all only have so much RAM. So if you have that to-do list of things to do, things for the close a transaction, follow up with clients, um, stop for uh, stop at the uh, grocery store to get things for dinner, it's just held up in your mind. And because of that, you can't really think about bigger things. You can't even be accomplished well because we only have so much RAM like our computer. Well, when you have a good system, a system gets it out of your head and you know that that system will remind you of things that you need to do in the future. That system needs to be uh, easy to capture ideas, easy to prioritize them to say that this task is more important than something else. Um, they, it needs to be something that will remind you today for me, that needs to be something that uh, pops up on your phone and your laptop that will remind you that this is the task that needs to be done today. And it needs to having a holding tank. You're probably just like me. You sit down at times, uh, you've listened to a podcast, they have some really good ideas about something that could grow your business. So you're like, oh, you just start thinking about that. Well, and that'll just stay in your brain. If you have a system that allows you to capture those thoughts very quickly and then will remind you to come back to that in the future and then prioritize that. It gets it out of your brain and you can go back to the task that you need to accomplish that day and still take advantage of that new idea in the future. For me, there are two things that I use in my personal life. I use a, uh, a web-based application called Trello. They also have a, uh, an iPhone and Android application and I use Evernote. 
If you're interested in hearing more about my system, let me know and maybe I'll do another video and show you what that system actually looks like for me. I mentioned the uh, the group of guys that I'm with that um, know everything about me. They know uh, everything about me business-wise, personal-wise. That's part of the thing because to be successful in the short term, you have to surround yourself with high bandwidth, fast cadence people. I sometimes will look for those people that are operating um, more successfully in work and at home. Now we know that a lot of times people don't always show you what's really going on underneath the uh, underneath the hood. But, but when you get that kind of viewpoint, if they're really operating better, I go ask how. I have a friend named Karen here in Atlanta. Every time I talk to Karen, I'm like, man, I'm not doing enough in my life. Like Karen and her husband, they, they have been immensely successful in business. They're respected by a bunch of people. They help in charities and ministries and their kids um, seem to be doing well and, and, and are growing. And so I talked to Karen and I'm like, wow, I need to be doing more. So I ask her more questions. So when you surround yourself with people like that, you realize, hey, there's a lot more that I could be doing here or a lot of inefficiencies in my life. And that personal interaction helps a lot. What I find really important, and this is just the last step, is while you're trying to figure out your cadence, in this short term, you need to figure out what, what cadence looks like for you. Um, not me in these pictures, but uh, I think this kind of represents uh, something well here. Do, what is your cadence for wanting to, to work, spend time with somebody, be by yourself, um, or you know, get some exercise? What does that look like for you? We all have a cadence, but intentionally thinking about what your cadence is and identifying that is really important. For me, I am really efficient early in the morning. Not everybody is. I'm also really efficient late at night, so it is helpful that I don't have a lot of sleep. But there are times in the day that just aren't or don't work that well for me. Something else that keeps me really efficient is making sure that I have one day a week where I'm off. Like if I want to, I might work, but I don't have anything I need to do. And so by learning your cadence and figuring out what that looks like for you is very important. Um, another, a, a woman I know here in town, she uh, she she needs uh, an entire day where there's nothing to be done whatsoever. Reading books, spending time with the kids, um, not even thinking about work, and a half day uh, at another time during the week, usually in the middle of the week. Um, w when those two things get met, uh, the rest of her week is highly efficient. So finding out what your unique cadence is is really important, and it's something that you can start to document if you don't know it already. I think many of us do if we really just take 15 minutes and go and think through our, our last year. But um, think about what that cadence looked like when the distractions typically come up and how you can uh, start to grow through that. And just remember that your business, your calendar, your personal life is that battle carrier on the left. People eat when it's time to eat. They take time off when they need to take off, time off and they get their job done when it needs to be done so that when they're home, they can be on the right. So this is really important, I think, just this perception is not just remember what your perceptions are, but remembering that you need to protect your calendar like you're at war. Thank you for taking the time. I'm so excited that uh, we did this. If this was helpful for you, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, find me on LinkedIn, or even send me an email. On most social networks, I'm at Kurt Euler, or you can find me on my personal website. And of course, with Showcase, you can find me anywhere on Showcase as well. So thank you.